Hey everybody, welcome to what is hopefully going to be the save that we do for the whole of the FM23 life cycle. Um, I literally just want to try and just play this save solidly for the next 10, 11 months, barring any misfortunes, sackings or whatever, in which we are managing Budbalski Club Partizan, also known as Partizan Belgrade. Um, like I said, this is hopefully going to see us the whole of the FM23 life cycle. We've got a lot of objectives that we are going to have to try and hit that we have set ourselves with the help of some of the people in Jake Cooper's Discord. Um, honorable shout out to Zachary Redmond. He, he has been talking to me quite a bit about the save. He's had quite a few little ideas on what we can do to try and get the most out of it. So but it would be remiss of me to not give him a little bit of a mention, even though it is probably going to swell his head a little bit um so yeah we are here we're in serbia we're in belgrade let's just get into it and let's start with what we want to achieve here <laughs> yes everyone it's a bit of a different challenge for us with this save obviously when we well when we when i first started when the first few of you started watching me in fm21 in about the june july it was with palmer and I was just doing it just for a bit of fun because I was going to play the save anyway. And I was like, I watched a few of Jake's videos, Jake Cooper's videos. I was like, I might as well. Let's let's do it as a series and see what happens. FM22 came out. We did Dortmund for the beta. Um, and then we tried to do the Pentagon challenge, which we were doing. And then FM22 now doesn't want to work. So we've had to basically put that in the sort of back burners for now until I can find a way of getting FM22 to work. Well, see, that was a disappointment. We never really finished the Palmer save. We never really finished the Pentagon challenge. We literally just finished the Everton save off. And then obviously, if you've been watching the ill-fated uh, FM23 beta, beta, you've entered the save, you'll have seen the last episode here. Um, if you haven't seen it, where I basically have a bit of a breakdown and spoiler alert, I resign. So um, yeah, <laughs> always fun. So with this one, this is literally going to be the one save that I am going to do throughout throughout the whole of M23. We're going to do a few little rebuilds here and there, you know, nothing like, you know, Newcastle or, you know, whatever. We just spend a load of money. We're going to take some teams who were kind of maybe slightly, you know, successful in the 70s, 80s. I'm looking at like Savandalek and teams like that and see if we can get them back to maybe not necessarily winning Champions Leagues, but at least maybe competing the Europa League finals or you know, get into Champions League knockouts, things like that. That is what we will deem a success for a team like that. And if there's any teams like that that you would like to see me do a rebuild for, drop the comments down below. Speaking of co dropping comments down below, if you want to do me a massive favor, leave a like on the video. If this is something you think is going to interest you, hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, like I said, leave a comment. Who do you want to see me rebuild? Obviously, once we've gotten into this a little bit more, have a little look and see if there's anything else you want to say. Um... So yeah, we're here at Partizan Belgrade, or Football Ski Club Partizan. They are part of the Partizan Sporting Group. So they, I think there's like, you know, Partizan Bardajov, who we managed on um, the Pentagon in Slovenia, Slovakia. Um, there's a couple of other Partizan clubs in Eastern Europe. Um, where I'm not sure if it's kind of like a, almost like a city group that you see, you know, obviously now we're in like Palermo, obviously Man City, Troyes, um, Mumbai City, I think it is, Melbourne City, New York City Football Club, and uh, Montevideo in Uruguay, and someone in Brazil as well, I think. Or like the Red Bull Group, you know, they're kind of all around the globe as well. Um, but they seem to have a predominant focus in Eastern Europe. And Eastern Europe is a, some of you might already know this, so you just have to humor me while I explain for those who don't. Back in like the sort of 40s, 50s, 60s, Eastern Europe used to be quite a big force in uh, continental football. Uh, in fact, if we look here at competitions, Partizan Belgrade were the runners-up in the Champions League in 1966. They were beating Real Madrid 1-0 into about the 75th minute um, before Real Madrid turned it round and made it 2-1 uh, before the end of full time. Um, but if you, anyone who sort of is interested in the history of football, you should look at the likes of Hungary. A lot of what they were doing in that sort of de those decades was quite revolutionary at the time and they garnered a lot of plaudits and the repercussions of that have kind of been seen throughout the throughout the years really um so we've gone to serbia eastern Bloc team um 
used to be part of the old Soviet Union, part of Yugoslavia. As you can see, we have the Yugoslav First League here, uh, Yugoslav Cup, etc., etc. Uh, obviously, when the Soviet Union fell apart, and then there's a big horrific civil war in Yugoslavia, where it's split into you know Serbia, Bosnia, uh, Czech Republic, I think. Well, now Czechia, you know, all those sort of countries all kind of had the fallout from that. Um, some of you might be like, Tom, you're wrong, and I'm sorry if I am wrong. That's just my understanding, vague understanding of the history. Um, but the way Partizan had this success in the 1960s, obviously you can see here they won a lot of titles during this time. Um, second only to Red Star, I think, in terms of first division um, titles, um, was through what was known as, at the time, the Partizan Babies. And this brings us quite nicely on to the first part of what we are going to look to achieve here at Partizan Belgrade. So the Partizan Babies is basically during the sort of 50s, 60s, basically the club got founded in 1945. They had a bit of an initial peak of success, like 1947, 1949, but it quickly tapered off. So what they did was they basically reinvented the club. They changed their kit, went from red and blue to black and white, which at the time, and it might still be, was a uniform of... The Gravediggers in Serbia, which is why they get the nickname and this is where we got the title for the save from. But what they did was basically, the Partizan's Babies was a squad basically made up of the kids of the existing players. So basically they brought through a load of their children, a load of their sons, loaded them through into the first team, put them into the you know, view setup and basically brought them through. And, you know, it reaped its reward. They had a lot of players who were used to playing together from a young age. And, you know, they got to the Champions League final. They beat Manchester United in the semi-final. Um, you know, they had a couple of big comebacks across the two legs. Um, so, you know, what we are going to aim to do is to help with that. Every year, every season, we are going to aim to have one player from the Dev Centre make at least 10 appearances throughout the season. And an appearance, for me, is going to be defined by... 30 minute spell on the pitch or more. I'm not talking about bringing them on at the 85th, 87th minute just to get that appearance. I want them to play a substantial role, even if it is just off the bench, but it's got to be for at least 30 minutes. And that is to try and help blood the young players in to get experience for the first team and help sort of contribute to that overall sort of very localized, young, homegrown um, player center, uh, like, you know, sort of player hub, basically. Um, but what we will do is, is, Every youth intake, so it's usually going to happen in about the March time. The following season, it's going to be a scholar from that youth intake that we're going to look to play the following season. So basically, every time we get a youth intake, at least one player from that intake is going to try. We're going to try and get them to make 10 appearances the following season and so on and so on. Obviously, it might be more. And I've already had a look at the save, this team. I've already dig, dug into the development center. And there was already about four or five players with four and a half star potential minimum under the age of 18. So they've a lot of them have actually already been promoted to the first team with a view to trying to achieve this pretty much from day one if we can. And then second, within five years, I want to have six homegrown club players. So they're players who we have developed through the club since we've been here, not thrown back to, you know, before we started. So there's players who are 16 years of age now will count because homegrown club, you know, it's that, that sort of 16 slash 18 to 21 age period where they've been trained, where they've been at the club and they've trained in football, basically. So I think I've said, yeah, starting the first game of the 27 to 28 season is when we're going to have, we're going to have six homegrown club players starting that game is the aim. So we've got five seasons to develop them to the point where they, on the opening day of that 27-28 season, they're starting. Six homegrown players, not on the bench, in the starting 11. And this was, this was kind of a 2.5, I thought, at the time, but it might actually be more of a, you know, more of a separate point on its own, really. But I felt it kind of went hand in hand with trying to help develop players um, from our team, hopefully, because if we can manage the national team within five years, hopefully we can start blooding some of our players through boosting their overall quality and increasing their match experience to the point where they are hopefully ready to handle big games. So yeah, managing the national team is going to be part of this save with a view to helping grow Serbia as a footballing nation. Now, the league itself is currently 11 in the European coefficient. So what that means is that we actually only get 
I think if we were to win, if we were to win the, the playoff group um, as it is, um, we, I think we will maybe actually maybe get to the group stage of the Champions League or we might go into a playoff. I can't remember, but exactly. But the, it basically it's kind of like Austria or uh, Belgium. You have like a preliminary phase and then the league splits into two. You have a relegation phase and you have a championship phase. So um, we may well end up, if we're lucky, winning and going straight to the group stage. But I've got a feeling that when I was reading about it, we may not go straight into the Champions League. We might have to qualify, which from what I've seen on previous times we've been playing FM, as I always see Red Star playing in the knockouts, usually against like a Rangers or someone like that or a Malmö. Um, so I'm pretty sure that we will have to um, qualify. We won't go straight to the group stage. So the aim is going to be trying to grow that to a point where we're in the top 10 and we can hopefully just start qualifying straight away by winning the league, essentially. Now, this might seem a bit of a weird one. You might think, 10, 10 years? But what you have to remember is, when was the last time like Red Star got to the UCL knockout? I can't remember it happening anytime recently. Maybe once in the last five, six years. And I think they then got swiftly dumped out. Um, so within 10 years, I want to have at least a Champions League knockout at least once. Now, what you have to remember is, at, at, at this point in time, we're in the Europa League. We didn't even win the, se the league last season. Par um, Partizan haven't won the league for something like, since for the last five years, it's been Red Star. So we've got quite a lot of work to do to try and overthrow Red Star for a start. Never mind then getting ourselves to a quality where we can consistently compete in the Champions League group stages to then hopefully reach a knockout. So I've estimated for 10 years, which would be nice. Um, but it might take longer. It might take less. But ideally within 10 years, I want to achieve that. Ultimately, the end game of this save really is, is reaching a Champions League final. We want to get Partizan back to Champions League final, just like in 1966. Hopefully we can win it. And... We're going to start the game with 11 homegrown players, preferably homegrown club, but we will see how we go. We might allow for a little bit of leeway on a homegrown nation, but if we reach UCL final, the starting 11 is all going to be Serbian homegrown players. I may have an element of allowance for that if we sign, if we have someone coming in who's Dutch or Brazilian or whatever at the age of 16, and then they qualify to be a homegrown club player. But... Ideally, it will be 11 Serbian starting players. You might be thinking, well, what have we got to work with to achieve that? Um, you have to forgive me if it seems like I'm waffling and this is taking a while, but I'm trying to really do this justice because this is like my first proper big save that I've done on camera and I want to do it right because I feel like in the last, but since I've started doing this, I've either bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. Certainly on FM22, I felt like I was trying to juggle too many things at once and I couldn't progress with certain saves as well as I wanted to. FM21, I picked up Palmer quite late on in the game cycle. And then when FM22 came out, I went really hard on the Dortmund save. And Palmer basically got neglected and in the end just fell by the wayside. So I'm trying to do as good a job with this as I possibly can. So hopefully you can get as involved and interested in this save as I am. So we've got the Stadion FK Partizan, which was built in 2010. Sorry. Rebuilt in 2010, it was built in 1949. It's a 29,775 all-seater stadium. Obviously, eventually, hopefully, that will either be bigger or we'll get a brand new one, but we'll worry about that another time. It's owned by the club, which is always good. It's not owned by the council. We don't have to worry about buying it off anyone. We own everything there. So this is where it's going to be really important. We've got excellent training facilities, excellent youth facilities, good academy coaching, and exceptional youth recruitment. I've not made any moves to try and improve this yet. I've literally just got here. Chances are the board will turn me down because... Finances, everyone, aren't brilliant. We do have a little bit of debt, 15 million in debt. So the club is currently in the middle of trying to pay off that loan. Hopefully we're going to be able to contribute that through player sales because one thing that the club do want us to do is to sign high reputation players as well as sign players. It did say, yeah, sign players to sell for profit. So that is something that we are hopefully going to be able to do, certainly early days and develop players to sell for profit, improve the finances, one little sort of target I did sort of low-key set myself privately. So if we go into profile, we go into history, you can see players sold and the transfer value. Now for me, I think within six, seven years, I think it would be nice if we could have sold 200 mil worth of players. 
we're not at a point where, like, say, in the past when we were at Everton or Dortmund or whatever, where in one transfer window, we could generate 100 million of transfer income. We are not at that stage, not nowhere near, and it might take a while before we get to that stage. I think it's highly unlikely that we are at a point where we can be looking to sell some of these players. Some of them are very, very good for our level, but I think we will be lucky to get 5 to 10 million from the likes of a top European team. This is one player who's already caught my eye, is Nemanja Jovic. Um, Right-footed player who plays on the left, so we are currently using him on the left wing. We'll go into the tactic in a bit. But look at that, three stars already. He's 19 and he's got four star, guaranteed, hopefully five stars. Um, and we also look at this guy, Sam Balzar, uh, Bazdar, sorry. We brought him through from the development center as soon as we got here because we are looking to try and blood him into the first team. 18 years of age, hopefully he'll be someone who can who can do a good job in and around the team and look to potentially sell him on. I don't think he, I mean, he's got four star potential. I'd be curious as to whether he might be able to reach that. But obviously what we have to remember is it's relative to the squad and the league. Um, and then while we're here, I might as well show you these youngsters who I really do like the look of. Dusan Jovanovic is one of them, 16 years of age. His mentals and his physicals definitely need some work, but it's the technicals that really caught my eye. He's a born finisher already at the age of 16. Help with it, get a little bit of development on his composure, his decision-making, and hopefully he will turn into a really lethal striker for us. As well as we've got Dennis Totic, is someone who we're going to look to bring through as well to play on the wing. And we've also got the likes of, oh, where was he? Not him. It was another striker, I think. Oh, no, sorry, this guy, attacking midfielder, again, 16 years of age, getting to work on his passing. Hopefully he can become a really, really useful player for us again, potentially to sell on. Some of these, hopefully they'll be good enough to stay from the beginning. I'm just being realistic that we might have to look at moving some of these players on early doors to try and help with the finances, to help grow the club, grow the club's reputation. This is another player, Bogdan Machetic, who I really like the look of. 16 years of age again. Looks like he could be a really, really good winger for us. So the future is definitely bright, certainly in the short term, and hopefully we continue to build on that. What you have to remember is Partizan Belgrade have given us Alexander Mitrovic, Dusan Vlajevic, Filip Stefanovic. For those of you hardcore FM players will know he currently is contracted to Man City, but is out on loan at Girona. Um, so, you know, they've got good pedigree in producing good talent, which moves to the more sort of top leagues. So we also certainly be looking to do that, but in the meantime, growing the reputation of the club and the league where we can start to hold on to some of these big name players and hopefully they can take us places. Now, if you've watched me in recent saves, you know I love creating my own tactic. But to be honest with you, because this team and this league is a little bit of an unknown, I don't know how this team is going to play and I don't know how the general tactics of the league are. I've just gone for the tactics that my assistant suggested players will be comfortable playing and I've tweaked them accordingly. So we've basically got two tactics that we're working on at the moment. One is a wing play. One is a direct counter-attack. We'll probably look to use the direct counter-attack more in Europe, to be honest with you. Hopefully have this double pivot sort of screening and helping construct play um, and getting the ball forward quickly. The attacking players to hopefully spring a decent counter-attack. The one we are mainly going to be using, certainly in the league, we will be looking to compete and beat pretty much anyone we play, including Red Star, is, um, is going to be the wing play. And then as we get more comfortable, more confident, we will look to... Um, tweak and develop it how we want. You will notice that there's a certain Fernando Llorente here on, on trial. He was He's a free signing for anyone who's looking for a free transfer just to try and bolster your ranks to get a bit of, you know, get, try and get some goal through the door. Um, his wage demands were higher than I was prepared to pay uh, for this level when we're trying to conserve a little bit of money. One player we are looking to sign is Diego Tardelli, 37-year-old striker. Um, he's still got quite decent physicals for his age, but it's the mentals and it's the technicals that I really wanted him. Someone who can hopefully be a bit of a big name player in the big games, even we just bringing him off the bench, just someone to add a little bit of now, a bit smart, a bit of quality at the top end of the pitch to hopefully close out games. Another player we have signed, it'll be easier if I just go straight to transfers, is um, some of these, these <coughs> up to here, excuse me, uh, players who were signed before we got here. Whereas what we have done is signed Jonas Terzait, 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 um, as free signing central midfielder. He was free. We didn't pay anything for him. He's someone who has got enough decent 
technicals that we can work on, but hopefully stat pad him a little bit to the point where we can potentially sell him on for a quick sort of, you know, 100% profit. Uh, sorry, not 100% profit. 100 times zero is still zero, Tom. Um, he's going to be worth 70 to 700k. If we can get like a mil, great. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, just someone who, who's got some decent enough technicals that he can be useful for us with that passing and that vision. But I'm not expecting great things from him because I think there's too much development there, which I don't think we will have time to nurture through. But hopefully he's someone who could, we can just stat pad and sell. Uh, and then we also signed this guy, Urosh uh, Miladinovic. Miladinovic? 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 Um, we were quite sore in the left side of the attacking areas, I felt. And um, recruitment focuses, focuses now work, everyone. They now work since the full release. Um, and yeah, he is someone who our scouts found for us. They gave him a very high rating. They gave him A+. 18 years of age, decent determination. So hopefully he will drive to achieve what we hope he can. And then uh, hopefully, worst case scenario, we sell him on. But 725k, I think is a decent, decent investment. Um, I feel like I've waffled on long enough. And so we're going to go into the first game here of Partisan Belgrade. If there's anything else you want to know, drop it down below and I will do my best to answer it for you in the next time. Now, basic 4-4-2 is the team we're going with. Now, obviously... One thing we have used before here on the channel is just a simple push up of the wingers. Now we may well start with that. If you would like to go up there, Menig, please. We will start with that and we will see how we get on. Um, I think we're playing someone who we are expected to beat. And, you know, the assistant was saying, oh, go positive because I didn't realize the fault for the wing. Balanced. But, so this is what we're going to go with. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to worry too much about rifling through names. I'm not expecting you to know who half of these players are. Um, but players who will be looking to do a job for us is Ricardo Gomez. Um, he is someone who's got three and a half star rated, same as Quincy Menig. Um, so we'll be hoping that they will do the job for us. Latin Sehev Sehevich is a left wing back 21 who I've got big hopes for this season, who I hope we can bring through, again, potentially sell on bring a bit of money into the club um and i think without me dragging things out anymore let's get... we're home and uh, i've noticed that the stadium isn't particularly full which is uh, a bit disappointing but um yeah hopefully we'll start getting some more fans through the doors time So yeah, um, as I said, it's going to split into two halves. So obviously we want to be in that top half. Oh, I think it's April. It splits. And we're using the Zealand skin, FM enhanced. Um, so one thing I haven't done yet is customize all my um, greens. But we will do that as we go. Jovic, ah, unlucky, unlucky, that's fine, that's fine. Jovic, I've got really good hopes for him. We had a decent, decent-ish preseason. We lost a couple of games, we won a couple of games. And uh, Jovic was someone who certainly seemed to stand out. He did quite well, he got a couple of goals, a couple of assists, I think. So, yeah, I'm hoping he's someone who can be a really, really good player for us going forward. And, uh, yeah. And that's a lovely ball. Here comes Ricardo. Unlucky, good save by the keeper. Menig wins the corner, though. That's what we want, that's what we want. That's a lovely ball through for Ricardo. We have, I have done diligence, everyone, on um, set pieces. I spent about half an hour today creating set piece routines for the majority. I don't think I went for the full three for everyone, but I certainly created a fair few. We'll be looking, because that was the thing, one of the board uh, vision things was make the most of set pieces, so we have gone to town on that. Ricardo's in, hits the post, I think? The free kick, he was offside. But yeah, one thing I noticed, because we sometimes in preseason we, we weren't playing particularly great. Um, and one thing I noticed, the tactical familiarity was just garbage. So pretty much after every friendly where we could, we put in a match review. And it's definitely helped. Definitely really helped bump things up. Oh, Vinjovic. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. 
I'll be interesting to see if blocking has been changed, because if you've watched any of the Juve save, you'll know how much I ranted against that. And also if in transition play has changed as well. So I'm literally winning back in the middle of the park there. Come on, yes, Quincy. Did I say Quincy? It's like Queensy? Queensy? Like, it makes me think of the Vine TikTok with the... Is it Bichon? I should know him that. I think it's a Bichon in America. Queensy? Maybe we're just going to start calling him, like, referring to him like that. Jovic, nice cross, Pavlovic. Oh, that's... I thought he took that out. You might or may not be able to hear. It's 20 past 20 to 9 on the 8th of November and there's fireworks going off outside. What is that all about? Bonfire night has been and gone, guys. Let it go. Hmm. Really could do with getting. It would be nice to try and get a goal before half time. Good solid save. Here's a chance for the counter. And Patrick nearly loses it, but somehow keeps it going. Ricardo, is he going to get there? Not quite, but Jovic is. Can't find Pavlovic, though. Loppy. Markovic is someone I, he's like, I think he's like 20, oh, poor goalkeeping that, poor goalkeeping, 22 Markovic, he looks a decent player, that's poor goalkeeping though. I feel like it, he gets a hand to it, but not strong enough. Yeah, it does look like he does get a hand to it, not good enough. Lovely knock. Yes. Ah, one all. Pretty much straight away. Ricardo Gomez. Lovely bit of play. Down the wings. Just how we want it. Sivkovic feeds it over. Menegin behind. And he plays a lovely pass through for Ricardo Gomez, who makes no mistake and finds the far corner. What have we got in here then? Well, that's tiny. I have to change all these at some point. This is what I love though. The analyst. Analyst. Uh, analyst feedback. Get me words out. Few nervous heads there at half time, but hopefully we managed to come. Oh, I didn't realise Sejovic got injured. Is he is he gonna last? I don't know if he's gonna last. I don't even know what injury he's got. That's away, thank you. Well closed down. Right, let, let's see. Can we get a bit of info on this? No. Lovely delivery. That, oh, oh, oh. Penalty, penalty, penalty. Penalty. Ah, that's a penalty. Yeah, let's face it, it's never not going to be given in that sort of instance, is it? And it's Manjovic. Ooh, people got a hand to it, but it still goes in. He, I think he, he was one of the ones who was a bit nervous. He's looking a bit calm there, but he just absolutely leathered it in, didn't he? Let's see what's going on with Sejovic. We've got options we can bring on. Hampered by his injury, we're just going to bring on Slobodan Orisevic, who is someone who is more than quite capable of playing that role for us. These are all a bit of a mismatch, aren't they, at the moment? We'll, we will sort these out. It's 2-1. Early doors. Nice, 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 nice. Interesting distribution for the keeper, and it worked, because Nemanjovic is in here. He plays it to Jurisevic, who's just come on. He has a shot, and it's on over. On over. Yeah, one thing I'm not getting on this is like, you know, assistant feedback. So we need to we need to look into sorting that out. 
Interesting knock. Pavlovich makes it 3 1. Onside, ref. Onside. It's the V. Oh, obviously, the V. I oh, wish that. Second decision, and it's been given. 3 1. Manic with a great knock. Jovic. Yeah, he was onside all day. I'd be interested to see the replay as to how close they deemed it to be. He is quite comfortably onside, really. I mean, I think with that, I think Jovic is 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 tired already. Fair enough. Uh, Terzic, I don't think, is one of our special little... Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. No, that's, that's not finished that sentence. Milan Alexic, we're going to bring him in. We're gonna we're gonna try early doors to start putting them in, and you know what is Bogdan? Is he? He's left footed, and now I know he's naturally right, but we're gonna put him on the left for Jovic. I think he is someone who I have got working on playing as a left winger. To be fair, and who else? I think we leave it at that for now. Am I going to get... Uh, no, I need to sort it out so I can get my assistant feedback because that's how I missed the injury because I didn't see the, the pop-up from the dugout to tell me that he was injured. I feel like... Basically just seeing... Literally just under my neck. In. Um, who will praise them because they've responded really well and I want to try and get them... Get a bit of a positive attitude going. Ricardo, 4-1. 4-1. And we are starting off here with an absolute bang. Little blip, 4-1. Uh, going 1-0 down. But I feel like that was the worst thing they could have done because he responded straight away. And since the halftime, uh, second half started, we've not looked back with Ricardo Gomez getting his second goal of the game. And it's Menig again, feeding him around the side. Oh, and here is, here is Bogdan Macetic. He's still going. Oh, he dribbles really nicely. Nearly wins the corner, but it's still alive. He's still got it here. He crosses it in. And Ricardo gets his hat trick. No, he's not offside. You're lying. Chat and rubbish. It's 5 1. And the 16 year old Bogdan Macetic with a fantastic assist. Lovely bit of footwork. Keeps going. Gets the ball back here. Keeps it alive, whips a great cross in, and Ricardo Gomez gets his hat trick, 5 1. And I think we give him a standing ovation and we bring on another youngster in Dusan Jovanovic. We're going to take Sane Chanin off for Lipovic. And Ricardo nearly makes it four goals for him and 6 1. And that is probably going to be his last input in the game as Alexic gives away a foul to stop the counter. So in today's episode, everyone, three 16-year-olds have made an appearance. And I think we can quite safely count Machetic and Alexic because they came on at the 63rd minute. And I'm hoping we're going to have 93 minutes in total. We're going to have three minutes of stoppage time. Ivanovic has come on, but I don't think we can count him. We have got three minutes of stoppage time. So the 30 minutes counts. Everyone, Alexic and Machetic will get that 30 minutes, which is going to go straight away already to our uh, dev center players with their appearances. That's a crazy tackle. Final whistle! Yeah, boys! 5-1. Beautiful stuff. Match day one, everyone. Top of the table. 5-1 win. Beautiful. And you know what, everyone? Don't worry, because this is the end of the episode, but we've not got long to go until the next one. Because the next game we're going to see here is against Red Star, our city rivals, um, who have been the dominant force in the league for the last five years. Because then, and then after that, we're playing them at home. We're going to follow that up with our Europa League preliminary knockout game. 
So, in fact, that episode is probably going to be a four. Quadruple header. Quadruple header. A red star. Europa League preliminary. PSC, whoever they are. Um, and then the second leg of the Europa League. We're going to do it all in one go. So, um, yeah, I feel like I, there may be some things that I've missed or skipped and it's not intentional. Um, it's just because there's a lot I'm trying to think about and I'm still a little bit, as you can probably tell, I'm still recovering from this chest infection. I'm so much better than I was, but I'm still a little bit, you know. So, um, yeah, I hope you have really enjoyed that episode, everyone. Like, I really hope you have. Um, and I'm really, really excited to see what we can achieve here with Partisan Belgrade or FK Partisan, as they are properly called. Um, and yeah, I will see you all very, very soon for a massive, massive game against our rivals in Red Star Belgrade. Uh, in terms of the league, we're sitting pretty top, but you know, first game of the season. There are 16 teams in total, so we'll be looking to play 15. Um, what? 30 games. 15 times 2, 30 games. Um, it's time for me to go, everyone. Um or we get to the preliminary phase of the league where it splits. So with that, everyone, I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to see you all very, very soon for the next episode here on The Gravediggers. Take care and bye for now.